you go to John chapter 10, verse 1 through 16. John 10, 1 through 16. Probably about, I don't know, 20 years ago. 20, by me, 18 years ago after I'd gotten saved, I was in a service mm -hmm. and a man by the name of Urban Rutherford, prophetic man of God, come up to me and he said, Hey, Mandy. Your ministry will revolve around John 10.10. 10. John 10.10 10 being the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So we're going to do some... Have another pen. We're going to do some talking. This can't be a pen that wasn't working. How about that pen? We're going to do some talking this morning. John 10, 1 through 16. Here we go. And I'm going to go through it, and I'm going to be talking as I read through the word this morning. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door mm -hmm. is the shepherd of the sheep. So, okay. If I come to your house and climb in a window, mm -hmm. I'm a thief and a robber. A thief. I'm a thief or a robber. Yes. I'm breaking and entering. Mm -hmm. If I come in through the door and you let me in through the door, then you know who I am and it's all good. Mm -hmm. Okay. To him, the doorkeeper opens and the sheep hear his voice. And he calls his own sheep by name. Yes. Listen to this. The good shepherd... Mm -hmm. will call out his sheep, and he don't just call them out, but he calls them out by name, for he knows their name, and he knows who they are, mm -hmm. and they know who he is, and hey, the shepherd leads them. And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep will follow him because they know his voice. Yes. It is very keen that we know the voice of the Lord God Almighty so we can decipher between what is true, what is God, what is not God, what is real. What are we uh, dealing with in our uh, everyday situations and so forth. Verse 5 says, Yet there will by no means, they will by no means, the sheep, hey, Jamie. follow a stranger, but will flee from him, mm -hmm. for they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this illustration but they did not understand the things which he spoke to them. So because they didn't understand, now he's about to elaborate and bring understanding on what it is mm -hmm. that he's talking about. Verse 7, then Jesus said to them again, Most assuredly I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. Mm -hmm. All who ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. So here he is saying, I am the door of the sheep. Because you can't get to heaven unless you go through Jesus Christ and yes. the cross. Verse 9 says, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved. There you mm -hmm. go. And will go in and out and find pasture. So watch this. Yes. He will go in and out. Go in and out. Mm -hmm. You go in to receive. You come out to prosper. Mm-hmm. He will find pasture. Any Talking about animals here. An animal cannot flourish unless it has green pastures. Mm -hmm. You cannot flourish unless you have the prosperity of the Lord. So when Jesus is saying, you come into my door, you come in and out. You come in and gain wisdom, and then you go out. When you go out, I will put you in green pastures so that you will prosper, hello, in all things, being healthy even as your soul prospers. He wants to bless you. Okay. Verse 10, the thief does not come except. So we're fixing to find out why except, the thief comes. Yeah. Those of you that are just now jumping on, go ahead and share, tag, comment as much as you can. Help us spread this message of hope and truth. For the thief comes to steal and kill and to destroy. And Jesus says, but I have come yes. that you may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Come that you may have life and you may have life abundantly. Because Jesus said, I want to put you in green pastures. I want to put you in blessing. I want to put you in prosperity. I want to take care of you. But you got to hear my voice. You have to listen to me. Don't listen to false things, which we're going to get into. Yes. So here we know that there is a thief. But we don't know who the thief is. Mm -hmm. Who is the thief? So we got to identify who the thief is. So that we can understand the thief 
and make sure we're not following the thief. Verse 11 says, I am the good shepherd. And the good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. Yes. So the good shepherd is willing to lay his life down mm -hmm. for the sheep. Now, we are to be Christ-like, which means we are to do as Christ did. That does not mean that we're going to a cross, mm -hmm. but we are to lay our lives down, those yes. that are in the fivefold, to be a part of blessing the community and blessing yes. the church and blessing the people of God and being there for them. Verse 12 says this, but a hireling, mm -hmm. stop. What is a hireling? Hey, Clint Collins. A hireling is a hired man who works only for money. Mm -hmm. No, They have no concern for what they were hired for. Mm -hmm. They only want their portion out of it. Mm -hmm. Now hear me, church. Everybody says, well, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, and they label the thief as Satan. The thief is not Satan. It's not talking about the devil here. He said, a thief, mm -hmm. watch this, the thief does not come except to steal, kill, and destroy, but I've come to give him life more abundantly. I'm the good shepherd, but the good shepherd gives his life to the sheep. But a hireling, one who watches the, watch this, a hireling is the thief. Mm -hmm. You can go read it in 2 Corinthians 11, 13 through 15. It talks about false prophets. Mm-hmm. Preachers and teachers and people of the word, that he who is not the shepherd, one who does not own the shepherd. Okay, let me back up. It's talking here about false prophets, false teachers, false preachers, false teachers of the word. Mm -hmm. He said, These are the ones that have come in sheep's clothing. They're wolves in sheep's clothing. Okay? But here in a minute, we're going to find something out about the wolf and the hireling. So here we go. He who is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep. Hear me clearly. No church, no leadership, no fivefold ministry owns the sheep of your house. Mm -hmm. They do not own them. Amen, Amber. They're only a spiritual influence over the sheep. Mm -hmm. But no spiritual influence can own the sheep. Mm -hmm. They are only watchers over the sheep because Jesus is the only owner of the sheep. I, I just want to say this, Chris, real quick. The reason why this is so important and so critical for you to understand this... You're fixing to get to my next point. I know what you're about to say. ...is because we are living in a time in this nation... Is that, I don't know. Oh, yeah, you're, you're going. Because you read over my notes a while ago. Now I didn't fixing, see yeah, any you're of fixing that. to go into it. So stop. I didn't see so any stop. of that. She's this fixing is to important. Go in, she's fixing to go into my next point because I called it and I know what she's saying. <laughs> so He can read my mind. Good try. I did not. That's it, not I, did, I didn't get with All that. All right. Point in fact is this. Watch what a hireling does. If you don't say what I'm going to say, then I'm definitely going to say right. it. Watch what a hireling <laughs> does. A hireling sees a wolf coming mm -hmm. and leaves the sheep, and flees. A hireling will flee, a will flee a wolf. That lets me know that he's not a wolf, he's something else. And I'm going to say what he is. It's a coward. Amen, Carl. It's a coward. Because a coward runs yeah. away from trouble. Mm-hmm. And doesn't take it on, head on, and does not stand and defend the sheep. Any person of the fivefold that will allow a wolf to attack a sheep, whether that sheep is on leadership or whether that sheep is a parishioner, that person is a hireling and not a shepherd. That's right. It says, and the wolf, once the wolf comes in, the hireling leaves, the wolf comes in and he leaves the sheep and he flees. Now watch this. And the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. The hireling flees because he's a hireling and does not care about the sheep. I'm going to get off here for a second. The hireling runs and hides. Maybe in a basement. Maybe somewhere else. And hides from other things. Because they don't know how 
to correctively communicate to somebody in order to appropriate and give the prophetic word of the real word. Okay. So the word I heard this morning was this from the Lord. He said, there is a castoration of the church happening today. To castorate a male or female means to remove the male seed and the female's ovaries so that they cannot reproduce. What does a hireling want to do? A hireling wants to bring worldly influences in, yeah. destroy your thought processes, mm -hmm. and bring a anemic word to destroy you. Let me tell you what the castration of the church is. It's the destruction of the seed of God. Mm-hmm. The definition of castration psychology says to render impotent, literally or metaphorically, by psych psychologically means especially by threatening a person's masculinity or femininity. Hear this. Any parent that would allow or want to tell their child that they are not the God-given orientation Love you too, of who the Lord says they are, whether male or female, that parent is a hireling parent that is castrating their children and stopping them from receiving or giving the proper seed in the proper manner in which God gave it. Yes. So anybody that would speak in favor of of allowing a sexual orientation to become something of a thought instead of, of a reality is actually the destruction, not only of the individual, but of that person as a child of God or becoming a child of God, now thinking that there's something that they're really not. Now, this goes deeper into the church. Well, and especially, especially, and, and I know the point that you're hitting on, we're, there's, there's children that are eight years old that are telling their parents or their parents are telling them that they're not who they are physically. And if you this try to go and listen, if movement, things begin to shift in our nation and you tell guys, that child, no, wait a minute, you're a boy, not a girl, you can be discriminated against and sued. Hold on. Let's, nice. go, back, let's go back to the church. Mm -hmm. The Lord said there's a castration of the church, which means there are people, the church is being deprived of strength, power, and mm -hmm. efficiency and being weakened. Hey, Dana Storms. It's in a weak, anemic preaching. Mm -hmm. Weak yes. preaching. Yes. Weak teaching. It, it, it is allowing things to be disoriented mm -hmm. and tainted and inf infiltrated into the house of God when it should be cast out. But the, yes. the reason that the hireling lets it come in is because the hireling is a man pleaser instead of a God pleaser. Yes. The castration of the church is destroying the American church because we're people are not standing for kingdom. They don't choose sides. Jesus said, you better choose. Whom shall you serve? Today. I mean, even, even day, Elijah, Elijah said, Whom shall you serve? Yes. You either serve God of fire or you serve Baal. And if you go running with Baal. Hey, Keith You'll Sammons. be destroyed with all the rest of the prophets. Yes. No gifts. Mm -hmm. We're seeing churches right now that have walked away from the gifts or said the gifts are not available or are saying we're not going to allow the gifts in our church because we don't want to um, scare anybody mm -hmm. in the church that may come in that's new. So we're going to command that the gifts be stifled and not. And it's destroying mm -hmm. the church. It is. It's shutting off the growth. The Lord is, listen, there's no power. Church is anemic with no mm -hmm. power. These castrated people standing in pulpits. Mm -hmm. Keith just texted you. Okay. Keith from Aubrey. Okay. All right. Okay. The Lord is rising up. Mm -hmm. Men and women in this season yeah. that will speak truth and are guided by Jesus, the good shepherd. Why am I saying all this this morning? I love the church. I love the fivefold ministry. Yes. 
I love pastors, man. I got 40 of them I talk to weekly. What I don't love and hate with a righteous indignation is the fact that there are churches that are leading people astray and actually leading them yes. to a den of wolves. And when the wolves show up, they run. Mm -hmm. And I'm tired of weak-backed, limp-wristed preaching that is not telling Christians how to stand as a Christian and to allow that to be implemented into the rest of their lives. Thank you for saying you love evangelists too. Thank you. Amen. So hear me when I say this. If I, 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 I'm not a pastor of a church. I'm an evangelist. Amen, Dana. I'm an agitator, the word says, to come in and stir up the things in you so that you can provoke be, you and to provoke holiness. you to the righteousness and holiness. This means Christians that would go to a ballot box and drop a vote for an individual that is all about the destruction of, of the truth of the gospel that will shut down preaching and teaching. Mm -hmm. You've become a hireling. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Amen. And I declare and pray for men and women Amen, of God Nathan. to stand up righteous, holy, yes. and speak truth. Yes. And do their job as ministers of the gospel. To allow the gifts operating in the church. To allow the prophetic to operate. To allow the gifts of the spirit. Now we're not going to let them try to come in and overtake a service. Because they're, 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 they, they don't want to uh, abide by the leadership. That's, that's wrong. That's a whole other teaching. whole other teaching. you got to respect your authority. You have to remain in order. But follow the good shepherd. Verse 14 yes. says, I'm the good shepherd. And I know my sheep and am known by mm -hmm. my own. As the Father knows me, even so I know the Father, and I lay down my life for these sheep. Yes. And other sheep I have which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they will hear my voice. I will and there will be no there will be one flock and one shepherd. Amen. Church, hear me. Make sure that you're in a Bible believing church. Make sure that you stand with a pastor that is willing to tell you the truth. Amen. That's willing to look you right in the eyes and say, you're in sin. Amen, Amber. I'm going to give you an example. I was in a church, and I'm going to say where and when, and I had a, a young man and a woman come up to me and say, will you pray for our family? She was pregnant. And said, will you declare blessing over my family? I said, are y'all married? They said, no. I said, then I will not pray because you're living in sin. They admitted what they were doing and, and everything. And, and, yeah, and I, I mean, cannot try to bless something that you have not united in the in, in, in the oneness of Christ. Not in oneness. And I'll take that back because people are going to get on me. Oh, you're oneness? No, I'm Trinitarian. So until you get your heart right with Jesus and y'all get married, I can't try to pray a blessing over you because you're living in sin. Mm -hmm. All you're doing, you're not divorced yet. You're with her. She's pregnant. And you want God to bless you. No, you need to get your heart right. You need to go get married and then and get divorced so you can get married if this is the direction you're going, so that God can bless you. Mm -hmm. See, that, that's what I'm talking about. You can't bless a mess. You can't, you can't sit here. <laughs> well, God can bless a mess, but what you can't do is sit here and twist the scripture in, a manner, saying, in yeah. a manner in order to make somebody feel good about themselves at an altar instead mm -hmm. of saying, you've come to an altar to die. You didn't come down here to feel good. That's good. You either came down here to die to one thing and receive another, which means this. We've got to hey, preach Angie. the truth. That's, now, listen, somebody said, well, that's just harsh. No, that's love. Mm -hmm. That is love. Yes. The chastising of our peace is love. And I've got to have that. I walk in that. Mm -hmm. I live in that. And I declare that when I go into a church. Sin separates you from the love of God. Period. That is the truth of the word. I want to be led by a good shepherd that listens to the voice of the shepherd. And I can listen to preaching and teaching because I'm a sheep 
and I hear the voice of the Lord. I can listen to preaching and teaching and know whether or not that person is a hireling or a shepherd. Mm -hmm. If you're in a house with a hireling, get out. Go find a shepherd. Because when hell tries to come against that house, he'll leave you hanging and let the wolves attack you. And in these days that we're living in right now, you need somebody that'll stand up. You gotta have somebody that'll stand up, that'll stand for you. That when accusations come against you or against the church, they'll stand and say, no, you're not attacking this house. Amen. No. You're not bringing a, um, a mandate order against this house to shut down. No. No. You're not coming against my First Amendment right. You're not coming against my religious freedom. Nope. Nope. Amen. Nope. Not doing it. We're going to stand. We're going to walk in power. Yes. We're going to go out and we're going we're gonna to go in, receive, go out, and prosper. That's what Jesus said. Come in and out. You come in to receive. You go out and I give you green pastures. God, that's such a good word. We miss that because we get so stuck on the, the thief. We talk more about the thief, kill, steal, and destroy, and then we put it on Satan and say, well, that's the devil. It didn't. It's not the devil. It's the hireling. Do not be... Amen, Pastor Brent. Do not be led by a hireling. They will leave you dry and hanging dry. They'll leave you hanging dry and you'll have to defend yourself and they'll run off and it says the wolves will then scatter the sheep. But listen to the good shepherd because the good shepherd will give you the understanding of who the true, the true shepherd will give you the understanding of who it is you're listening to. I heard the Lord say this, that the castration of the church is going to stop because God's raising up true men and women of God. Here's the other thing. It stops because you quit listening to them. Amen, Sandra. You got you to gotta cut your ear off mm -hmm. to a castrated individual that is only there as a hireling to rape you and not to love you and tries to get something from you're not you. talking about in the physical. No, you're talking about in the spiritual. Of course, this so, is the that, spiritual. That's not a normal language that you use. Well, this is the spiritual. So, I'm, I'm on the spiritual. Why would I go yeah. into? I'm not talking about a pastor raping somebody. I'm talking about spiritual. Well, and to clarify, there's a lot of new people on here. Spiritual today. destruction Amen. of an individual's uh, Christianity. Yes. Based upon the actions of an individual. Amen. And the way that they speak. Amen. Praise God. Amen. There, there's a couple of things, and, and actually, whenever you had stopped me earlier and you, you knew what I was going to say, there was something different. It was, uh, I wasn't going to say that, for the record. You got something different later. No. Um, see, the reason why this word is so critical right now is because we are at a time in history in our nation where you as the body of Christ have got to have discernment. You have got to have wisdom. This teaching right here is providing truth and wisdom and to give you kind of like a recipe of when to know, okay, that's a trigger. Okay, that's not God. Okay, that's not God. Let me tell you what discernment is. Discernment's an ear to hear. Discernment is not spiritual. Okay, because some people say, well, I've got the spirit Amen, of this, I've got the spirit of discernment. No, you don't. There's no such thing. Okay? It's called discerning. Which, discerning of spirit. Discerning of spirit, which is the reading of somebody's mail. That's what that spirit is, is that I've got the discerning of spirits that mm -hmm. I can discern the spirits in the room and know and what's no. going on in somebody's life. Um, that discernment is having an ear to hear the Lord. And being, okay, I am discerning in my spirit something's not right. Now, that does not give you the liberty to go out and become a uh, prophetic spiritual caster outer of what you think is a demon or somebody because you don't agree with their opinion or like what they're saying and be like, well, I'm discerned she's a Jezebel. Well, you don't know that unless you know the person. That's right. Well, I don't like the way she's dressed. You don't know unless you know the person. Okay, so we can't use this church lingo of I've got the gift of discernment and go around and calling people who they are and who they aren't when you haven't even been given the authority to speak into somebody's life. So you've got to use wisdom and proper so wisdom balance. Wisdom and understanding. Proper balance with all of That's this. That's what you need. You need wisdom and understanding. Yes. You know, 
Chris also mentioned he was talking about um, who you listen to. I want to remind you and reiterate who you listen to is important. Whether it's a podcast, whether it's the news, whether it's a TV show, what you let in is eventually going to be what comes out. What you let in can also desensitize you to the truth. It can, it can numb you. It, 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 it's almost like a... a, a, a in the spirit, kind of like a morphine of some sort that numbs you and you get into a neutral position and you just kind of go with the flow. So you have to be very cautious what you're listening to, um, whether it's music, whether it's the news, whether it's a person, a podcast, all of those things are relevant and matter to understanding the wolves, yeah. understanding who the cowards are and, and, and who you could be following. Who you follow matters. And please, please recognize that, and, and, and we want to encourage you, and Chris even said this, so I'm just going to kind of tag off of this. There are so many incredible pastors that are out there that are speaking truth, that are leading their sheep in the right way of the shepherd. Uh, we actually Amen. talked to multiple of them yesterday, that they're making a stand. I just want to encourage you that there That's are there are men and women of God. Again, we talked to many of them yesterday that they're making a stand. They're not closing their doors. They're standing against the sickness. They're standing against injustice. They're standing against liberal movements. They're standing for your for your religious freedom. And they're making stands and they are not cowering down in the pulpit. So I want to encourage you that if you are looking for that kind of house, it exists. It exists. They're all over the place. We, we get to partner with multiple of them all across this nation, and we are so thankful that we get to do that. Now, let me say something right here, too, because I, I feel like we have so many different... We're going to so many different scenarios right now. I don't want to get off track of what we were actually talking about. Hear me. Don't put your pastor, evangelist, pastor, or teacher up on a pedestal, because when they fall... It's, you're going to be disappointed. Mm -hmm. Don't put them up on a pedestal. Don't put me up on one. Mm -hmm. And that's not an excuse of a uh, of saying, well, because I can't stand it when people say, don't look at me because I'm not perfect. No, because Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. Mm -hmm. But here's what we can't do is we can't allow those individuals. Yes, we love them. Yes, we think they're awesome. I love my pastor. Oh, gosh, and I'm yes. like, man, he's, I love hearing him preach. I'm like, golly, that dude is just amazing. I love hearing him preach. I love hearing him teach. I love hearing him release the word. But he's not my Jesus. Amen. Okay? Amen. But you better be praying for him. That's right. Carl Walton just said we better be praying for our pastors. You better be praying for him. They're being attacked. Yes. And they're going to be attacked even more as the days progress. Yes. So, what I need you to know. Is there, who are you following? Are you following a true shepherd or are you following a hireling? Because I don't want you to be scattered. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Hey, Jennifer Stewart. In the name of Jesus. Yes. I hope I said all that. Because there's so many different directions you could go with this. But this is the direction. Know who you know. Know the good shepherd. Know his voice. And watch God bless you. And then Amen. God's not just going to bless you. He's going to give you abundantly. Well, look what I said. In and out and yes. good pastures abundantly beyond what we could ever even think or even possibly so imagine. I'll come and bring blessing, abundant blessing to you. There's so many of you that are just jumping on. Go ahead and watch the replay of this. Help us spread this message of hope and truth. Um, social media is censoring conservative uh, Christian voices like crazy right now. Um, we got out of social media jail yesterday, but apparently we got back in today. I don't know so, what we, did. we just preached Jesus. I don't know. <laughs> so comment uh. as much as you can. Share as much as you can. Share this message multiple times a day. Don't just share it once to your platform. Amen. Share it multiple times a day so it hits the feed appropriately so people can jump on and watch this replay. If you are watching us on Facebook, make sure you can get notified. Go up to the three little dots, um, click into it. It'll give you an option that hits following. Then it'll give you all the prompts so that way you can have priority notification when we go live and when we make a post. If you are watching on YouTube, hit the subscribe and follow buttons so that way you can know every time we upload one of the replays to our YouTube channel or just a now word that Chris has that may not be released on Facebook. So please be sure to follow Talk us to on all those platforms. Yes, go 
to our website, chrisworksministries.com. If you have not become a partner yet, prayerfully consider um, what seed it would be that you would have to sow into this ministry. We can't get where we're going and do what we're doing without your faithfulness in financial support and prayer. You are impacting lives all across this world every time that you sow a seed into this ministry. You are, you are sowing seed into fertile soil and you are, are, you're helping be a part of restoring marriages. People not committing suicide, pastors not oh, quitting, pastors that are completely on fire for the Lord as a result of a revival that we may have brought into their church, that we may have stirred and agitated and stirred them to the things of God. Um, there's so many things that our ministry Good does, morning. that our ministry does, and so many lives that our ministry affects. And again, you get to be a part of all of that. You are a part of impacting lives. Again, go to our website, chrisbrooksministries.com. All of the information's there. Click the partner donate. You can make a one-time donation or you can partner monthly. We have partner exclusives there as well. And we also have our new revival gear there if you are interested in pre-ordering that as well. All right. So. That's the P-Wad for today. May the Lord yes. bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you. May you be blessed in the field and in the pastures, man. In the pastures. As you come in and out, for this is the day the Lord has made. Yes. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I declare no plague, no pestilence, no tragedy come against you. Amen. You are blessed. Remember, it doesn't challenge you, it won't change you. Amen. Bye.